messages, press releases. They're telling you their side, but you just want the facts. And that's why you come to me. I give you the statistics without spin. Out of 116 million working age Nigerians, 35.5 million are employed full time. That's 30 percent. I give you the context. I give you the history. I fight fake news with facts. Kayode. Let me talk. No, Kayode, I will. I will let you talk. Kayode. Kayode. I will let you talk if you let me talk. Kayode. That's why more and more Lagosians are tuning in. Half a million Lagosians. Seven hundred and twenty thousand. Nine hundred and seventy thousand. Over one million Lagosians. They know that if you give me your afternoon, I will give you hard facts. You know, I am Sandra Ezekwasili, and these are your hard facts. It's five minutes past three, Lagos. Good afternoon. I'm Sandra Ezekwasili, and these are your hard facts. First one of the day, 920 new COVID cases over the weekend nationwide. 281 cases were here in Lagos. Uh, I'm glad that we've come back down to triple digits. So we're thankful for that. It looks like the fourth wave is ending, but we have to remain vigilant. You have to limit your movement. You have to wear a mask when you uh, go out. You have to keep your distance from uh, people when you can and wash your hands as much as you can, sanitize as often as possible. Let's all do our parts until all of us can get vaccinated. And speaking of vaccines, go and get vaccinated. Second hard fact of the day, Serap has asked the federal government to publish a copy of the agreement that they claim to have signed with Twitter. Serap says it's necessary because the public needs to make sure that the government is not making demands that violate the rights of Nigerians. And, of course, you have those who insist that um, there's no such agreement that was signed, especially since Twitter has not confirmed it. And so they want the government to prove it by publishing it. I'll let you know what happens next. <laughs> that hard fact of the day, be careful with flash drives. That's a warning from the NCC, the Nigeria Communications Commission. They said that a group of hackers is trying to compromise as many computers as possible with ransomware. It's a type of virus that locks you out of your computer until you pay the hackers a ransom to let you back in. The NCC says that um, the group is sending out flash drives to as many people, as many businesses, um, as many organizations as possible, hoping that people uh, connect these flash drives to their computers. So if you get an unexpected flash drive delivered to you or handed to you don't connect it even if you know the person that they say the flash drive is from um, don't connect it contact the person confirm that they actually sent you a, a flash drive before you connect it to your computer i always say that one million equations cannot be wrong and that's because i give you this type of information every day and i have another great and informative show for you today we'll start uh, with the big weekend uh, we'll talk about weekend's showdown with civil defense and the police over illegal refineries i've got videos for you so if you've never watched us today's a good day to watch us we're live on nigeria info 99.3 that's facebook nigeria info fm that's youtube then we'll talk about inex saying that time is running out for the electoral act amendment bill let's also talk about the southern and middle belt sociocultural groups wanting the presidency rotated to the south next year and then we'll talk about the newest presidential aspirants. Today's a special day. We're going to continue the conversations we start now all the way until 4.30 uh, because from 4.30 uh, we'll bring you more coverage of AFCON. Now there's no big hard fact today because we're taking you live to Cameroon for the AFCON. Omo, did you guys check out Group E this weekend? I was watching and uh, I mean I couldn't believe what Equatorial Guinea did to Algeria. And then what about Sierra Leone? My goodness, I'm so happy for them. That's two draws now against the top dogs in their group. Very, very, very fun football happening there with Group E. Uh, also, congratulations to Super Eagles for winning their own match. Big shout out to Maduka Okoye, even though he considered one goal. But I, like I was saying on my on my Twitter, I noticed that his lashes was entering his eye. You know, he has long lashes. He was entering his eye and he was cleaning it. Mm, my God will be with you. Okay. All right. As usual, I'll bring you the latest news updates every hour on the hour. But let's uh, let's get right into the big weekend. Uh, like I said, Lagos. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, and these are your hard facts. The big, the big weekend. How a 
involved are law enforcement agents in the River State illegal refining industry. How involved are law enforcement agents involved, you know, in the River State illegal refining industry? How involved are they? And uh, will the Electoral Act Amendment get passed early enough for INEC to use it? Do you think that that's going to happen? Should the presidency be zoned in 2023 and where do you think it should be zoned to? Should it be zoned? Where should it be zoned to? Which presidential aspirant do you think are fit or unfit? Presidential aspirants. Which ones do you think are fit? Which ones do you think are unfit? It was a big weekend. Let's get into it. There was a showdown in uh, River State this weekend uh, between the governor and law enforcement over oil bunkering or oil fire. My Rivers people, I hope you people are, are here with me and you're uh, listening to our story today. Hmm? Uh, those, are, th those are the local terms for illegally diverting and refining crude oil, bunkering, oil fire. Governor Yesomwike has blamed bunkering for the suit problem in River State. And he asked the local government chairman to identify um, the refiners. I have to tell you, suit is one of the reasons I left Port Harcourt. Like, it was terrible. It is still terrible. It was so bad. But the drama started when the Obiapo local government chairman, accompanied by police, tried to shut down an alleged refining site. But another set of police and civil defense personnel allegedly tried to stop him. This is uh, the Obiapo local government chairman. They tried to stop him. Now, there's video of the standoff. Like I said, if you are watching our live stream at the moment i'm about to show you that video if you're watching that video uh on facebook nigeria info 99.3 on uh, youtube nigeria info fm you see what i'm talking about but if you can't watch here's the sound we need to arrest all of them now. that's what i'm saying yeah. okay. that's what it is go ahead sir. So, Come, all the civil defense. Where's the commander? You are the one, you are the commander. I'm the PSO to the governor of River State. So what are you people doing here with this one? Uh, yesterday, your guy was denying that you are not doing bunker, you are not guiding any bunker. What is happening here now? What is happening here now? It's not about God. My God. This is the my God. This is the headquarters. This is the headquarters. This is what you probably be doing. Yes. And your guy said yesterday when they meet, he said that you are not doing concrete, you are not getting anywhere. It's terrible. No, if you tell him, oh, let him. Let, let yes. him because he's the one. He's the one. He was the one who met here now. Later they started carrying guns. What? That is. Ah. I'm telling you. They started carrying guns. He was on. He was on what thing when we got here. Was a mafia yeah, boss. Uh, the man that came was wearing a. Come, yes, me. What is your rank? That is a, 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 a ASP. A minister. Disarm him now. Collect his rifle for me. So this is what you have been doing. And you guys were standing every day. No, 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 no. Every day. I will not take it. I will not take it. I will not take it. As the community people, people trucks line man. up here. Where are they? They should call all of them. Proof, proof, proof. All of them. 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 And the drama got hotter when the governor sent his chief security officer to the scene and he confronted civil defense personnel there. As a matter of fact, going back to the year 2019, a lot of the states chose... Are you seeing what police are doing? Police are fighting themselves. Police are fighting themselves. 
Are you seeing the cons conspiracy? What? Why? Why? See the conspiracy. See the, cons see the conspiracy. Can you just Are you seeing the conspiracy? Are you seeing the conspiracy? Share this video. Share this video. Can you see the conspiracy? No. Are you seeing the conspiracy? So there you have it. The video is still showing on our live stream, so you can watch it for yourself while we talk about this story. Civil Defense Corps has responded. Uh, Commandant General Ahmed Audi says uh, that uh, they've disbanded the anti-vandal unit in River State. This is the unit that the River State uh, government is accusing of providing um, security at that bunkering site. But there's more. There's more. Mwike has confirmed that a DPO of a police station in Emoha local government was accused of owning an illegal refinery. He says the commissioner of police in the state has transferred the DPO out of the local government area. But Mwike wants the man gone from the state entirely. So that's the situation in River State right now. What do you make of this confrontation at the illegal refinery? Remember, you can still see the footage on our live stream, Nigeria Info 99.3. That's Facebook. Nigeria Info FM on YouTube. What do you think about this allegation that a DPO is the owner of one of these illegal refinery sites? Men, call me on 0700-993-993-993. Women, call me on 01465-7190. 01465-7190. Men, call me on 0700-993-993. 993-993. You can also share your thoughts with us via WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. Hello, thanks for calling. Sorry about that. Call back if you can. Hello, good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon, sir. What's your name? My name is Ufuma from Agode Sherry. Welcome, Ufuma. You know, let me just quickly mention the issue of the president I want for Nigeria in 2023. The only one candidate, Sandra, is the vice president. Tunubu may have the money, no, but his grace to rule properly is not on his side. One of the persons that know that with God on his side, eh, he will try is a vice president for now. What, has Tinubu, he, what, what no. did he do as vice president that made you feel like he will try? Okay, let president. me just, okay, what's a wonderful question? Hmm. For example, when the body traveled like 105 days hmm. in his first tenure, look at the step that the vice president took. You know, the right step in the right direction. Hmm. And that time, it's like the country is going to come down. But you could have seen that the vice president was having meetings across Nigeria to bring everybody together. By then, there was peace in the nation. You know, it's also looking from that aspect of that angle, you know, he was able to, you know, like the DSS boss, Isa Gruzi, who when was in vice, acting vice. If Buhari is around, that man will not be sad. And what the man did, he will just do and go free. So we need a, a, a leader, a leader with vision, with right direction. So in 2023, all these dreams that uh, Tunubu is on, he will still bow down for civil. Let's well, Oshimbajo hasn't declared yet, so we can't, no, we, we can't talk about Oshimbajo's own. Yes, said, but let's... that there are some people are campaigning for him now, underground. Yes, but, he, have... but, but the people I'm talking, the people we will talk about on the show today are those that have actually declared. So let's wait until he declares to talk about him. He will him. declare at a dying minute. Right. Okay, let me just go to the river aspect. You know, not, you know the issue of Bonkiri, mm. how many people are being there? It is not today we are be hearing about bunker, bunker. What is the end of the result? So let's see what will happen in the university. All right. Thank you very much for calling. 99.3. Hello. 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 Yes, you're speaking with Sandra. Can you speak into your phone, please? Okay. Oh, Anonymous, you're, you're, you're sounding very far away from the phone. Uh, can you people hear her? I I can't. I'm struggling to hear her. Can you can you hear her, Lagos? I'm trying to see if people. I'm trying to. I, I'm trying to see if others can hear you. I am struggling to hear you. But if others can hear you, then go ahead. Can you speak up? 
All right, thank you. Call back. 99.3, hello. Good afternoon, Ma. Sister Sandra. Why are you calling the female line? Uh, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. 99.3, hello. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Olumide. Olumide, good to have you on uh, the show. Thank you, sir, Sandra. Mm. I want to, I mean, support the last person that called. That was you guys the next president. There's no doubt about it. You know, we we have been have been we've been looking at this man ever since uh, about uh, seven years ago. Also, what he did then, Buhari was not around. Even the PDP commended. It. He said he was he really tried that if you go and teach Buhari on how to rule, so he managed. Well, we're not yes, talking about right. we're not talking about Shimba just uh, 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 presidential amb ambition. Right now, we're talking about illegal bunkering. That's our first story. And Oshimba Jo has not declared, so we can't exactly talk about an Oshimba Jo presidency. No, no, wait, Sandra, no, wait. He has. There's no doubt about it. He will declare. Except we are just deceiving ourselves. He will declare. So people campaigning for him. He was with uh, what's the name? Uh, I think the people campaigning from there with the bandit and then he, he enjoys it so he will declare. We are supporting him. There's no doubt about it. All right. Thank you very much. 99.3, hello. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Because uh, people that are not fit to rule Nigeria is mm. number one. Osibanjo should go with the defense. All this account is not fit. Tunubu can be going to Mexico to resume like his organ. People that are fit to rule Nigeria is number one, Mr. Sandra. That's the question. Number two, Chore. Number three, Ade Ancho. Number four, Palana, if you want. Concerning the bunkering, are you hearing me? Mm. When you are talking about the bunkering, I was just laughing. You are blaming police that guard. Uh, somebody calls it, they are doing conspiracy theory. I want to ask you a question. The one that they are bunkering, uh, Nigeria oil is going to uh, uh, Referring and giving us only uh, only fuel out of diesel, out of aviation uh, gas, out of kerosene to measure the fuel. That was, you know, the high, higher, highest and uttermost of the bunker. <laughs> I ask you, that was, you know, the highest and the, the, the ignorant, highest bunker. I bet you may continue bunker in the rivers. Concerning NCC, are you hearing me? I'm hearing you. Thank you. NCC, because of their by first registration, key. Ugochi, first of March. What is the essence of NIM? In Zafara, Niger, and Kaduna. They are now telling you, telling me that we should save, safeguard our, what do you call ourselves? That we safeguard, but they don't hack us. Why they go for 10,000 and what they ask for? Niger, why make people pay 200 million? For us, let them go north and stop dosing and stop telling us uh, to the uh, Akin or, or Akin. All right. Thank you very much for calling. INEC says uh, it needs the Electoral Act Amendment Bill passed and signed quickly if it will be used to run the 2023 elections. We heard this from Festus Okoye, INEC National Chairman for Voter Education. Okoye said that usually INEC needs to finalize um, the governing law uh, 12 to 18 months in advance so that all its preparations will be in line with the law because remember that the elections are on february 23rd of next year so we already just have 13 months left will the national assembly revisit the electoral act amendment bill will they do it in time for INEC to use it effectively that's the big question now just to remind you president buhari went on the record in his media interview with his mouth this month to say that if NAS removes the clause, the, the clause uh, mandating all parties to use direct primaries only, he would sign the bill. So that's my question for you now. Now, uh, Lagos, will the National Assembly amend uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the amendment to the president's satisfaction? Will he indeed sign if they do? Or will the NAS try to overturn his veto with uh, two-thirds majority in each house? And can all of this be done in time for INEC to actually use the law? 
0-1-465-719-0-0-7-0-0-993-993-993. We've got WhatsApp as well. So let me take a look at some of the WhatsApp messages before I come back uh, to the phone lines. There's no way bunkering will go on without the secret backing of the security agencies. The, the cover-up is so tight, Baba Tunde Fasanya says. Uh, we've got more messages here. Sandra on Serap demanding for the copy of the agreement signed by Twitter. We all know the go federal government is lying to cover up their poor decision on banning Twitter and their intention to use it for their campaigns. That's a message from Christian. Christian is in Adja. Uh, another message here. Good afternoon, Sandra. Uh, I miss you like when you answer me, hmm? <laughs> okay. Sandra, I have three questions for Tinubu's campaign manager. Uh, well, we're not talking about Tinubu today. Uh, I think maybe you just copied and pasted an old comment from an old subject. Uh, good afternoon, Sandra. I am from River State. The problem uh, did not start today. I lived there for over 12 years. I traveled all over the states, including uh, river, river Rhine areas. Oil bunkering in River State is, has, is been spearheaded by the elders, kings, traditional rulers, youth chairmen, community leaders, CDC chairmen, and prominent rivers indigenes. It's almost impossible to stop it. I was named Moha, and my sister, Governor Wike, cannot stop it. That's a message from Samuel. Samuel is at Greenfield Estate. All right, let's come back to the phone lines. 99.3, hello. Hey, President Sandra, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good to have you on the show. What's wow. your name, sir? Long time no talk. Yes, welcome. This our World Cup is uh, causing something to this our program, but no problem. Thank you, my sister. <laughs> uh, quick one on Sarah. They should not bother themselves anymore. This man, which court you want to go to? Who owns the court? They're not going to court. Which, huh? They didn't say they're going to court. No, well, no, they want explanation now. The other time they see, maybe they sue federal they, government. They want, they want the federal government to publish the agreements they signed with Twitter. They, they should not worry themselves. Not this set of uh, people who are running the affairs. Mm -hmm. They will not listen to Sarah. Okay. Uh, we all know what we know about that uh, Twitter bar. They say why you man die, can man bury up? Because election they come. <laughs> they want to go through the back door to leave the ban that they met the condition. What condition did they miss? What stopped Lai Mohammed to come and uh, explain to us the condition? She be told us the, the offense they committed. That one aside, my sister. For the bunkering, I don't know why Onye Zenyu Songuke wait now. This diamond that is leaving office, he want to fight this. He cannot. All right. Thank you very much for calling. We have to take a break. Uh, remember, of course, last week I told you what the conditions were that Twitter allegedly met, but I told you that those conditions are not exactly conditions. Let's take a break. People, they always make me laugh when they talk. See, 2K not be money. So you never your fidelity get a lot in Melo's promo season 5 when it is say, we just chicken it 2K. You fit to win plenty millions. So all you need now to open any type of savings account with Fidelity Bank. In 2023 and where this weekend the south and middle best forum said that the presidency should be zoned to the south in 2023 i'm sandra ezekwesi you're listening to hard facts on 99.3 nigeria info we start mondays at three with the biggest stories that broke over the weekend and we give you a chance to share your opinions about those stories and uh today the umbrella group for afeni ferry johannes and Digbo and middle belt forum uh, you know, came forward and said, zone the presidency to the South in 2023. Joining them in the declaration was the Pan Niger Delta Forum, PANDEF. The groups released a communique uh, which uh, said that since President Buhari, who is from the North, has done two full uninterrupted terms, 
Then in 2023, equity and justice demand that the presidency come to the South. So they're asking all political parties to select Southern candidates. And they are warning that any party that does not will not win the four zones represented. The Southwest, North Central, Central uh, Southeast, and South-South. And then the Arawa Consultative Forum responded with its own communique and it said that the rights of parties to choose whatever candidate they like from whatever region should not be compromised as long as the candidate or candidates are competent. Now, this is a very different position from the one that uh, ACF took back in July 2013 when Gulag Jonathan was president, when Gulag Jonathan wanted a second term. Back then, in 2013, the ACF, the Northern Elders Forum, and a few other Northern groups came together to say that it would be morally wrong for Jonathan to stand again since this would disrupt rotation and zoning of the presidency. Let me quote you what Ango Abdullahi said in 2013, speaking for the groups. He said, quote, All of us have this very tough and common agenda. Not that the North is power hungry. No. Power rotation in 2015 will be argued on the rational agreement that is on the ground today. End quote. So back then... The northern sociocultural groups were arguing in favor of zoning. But back then, some southern leaders were against rotation and zoning. Like Chief E.K. Clark. I mention him because he was one of the leaders at this South and Middle Belt Forum Summit, representing the Niger Delta. In 2015, he repeatedly said rotation and zoning should not apply. He was supporting Jonathan at the time. So you have groups and leaders in both the North and the South switching their positions, switching their opinions on zoning within the last eight years. And you have to ask why? What has changed? Is it because today zoning will favor the South, whereas it favored the North in 2015? Does this mean that these groups will switch positions to whichever favor their goals? Does zoning really matter? Should the presidency be zoned? Where should it be zoned to? If you're a woman, call us on 01465-7190. 01465-7190. If you are a man, call us on 0700-993-993-993. <laughs> Share your thoughts on Facebook as well. Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3. Nigeria Info 99.3. You can also uh, give us uh, a, 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 a message, you know, via Twitter. Yes, we're back on Twitter, so I can talk about Twitter now. <laughs> Twitter is at Nigeria Info FM. I'll read your comments there as well. And yes, there's WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 080 959 75805. 99.3. Hello. Hello, Sandra. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name, ma'am? My name is Anne. I'm calling from Marco. Welcome, Anne. Go ahead. I want to talk about this therapy and the ranting always. Okay. Every time Buhari does anything, they want to they want to sue him to call the judge. But I remember during the answer when the when the hoodlum bought that uh, warehouse that the cargo food food that were supposed to be given to the people. Hmm. We are hoarded by one uh, House of Representatives member in the Senate. Hmm. He said that he's keeping it for his birthday. He did it. Hmm. Serap did not say anything. I was expecting Serap to sue that man that hoarded those food, rice, gari, and everything that people were supposed to eat during the lockdown. But Serap kept quiet. But it's any little thing that Buhari does. Serap will go to court and start ranting and making noise. Where they are supposed to make noise and help people, they will not do that. Hmm. So they should shut up and leave Buhari alone. And do what they're supposed to do. That's what I want to tell them. All right. Thank you very much for calling to say it. We've got... Uh, oh, how do you say your name, sir? Welcome. Go ahead. Welcome. Go ahead. Sandra, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, first of all, who are these uh, Middle Belt Forum leaders? Hmm. <laughs> you know? Hmm. I, I, so they are invisible to some of us. Okay. Uh, when we are talking about North today, we have North Central, North East, and North West. 
Maybe they are talking or they are speaking for a North Central, I don't know. Which even North Central are even clamoring for a presidency as we speak. So, Sandra, hmm. nobody is going to stampede. Hello? I'm hearing you. Nobody is going to stampede. I said nobody is going to stampede any group in this country to vote for anybody. Okay. Work for presidency, work hard, build bridges, and you get it. So nobody is going to... Look at what you just said, my sister. Hmm. When it favors uh, the likes of this Baba... Uh, uh, these other people. Mm. They were saying Jonathan must go, mm. that they are not going to support uh, anything of, of, of such. Mm. Now, today, they are going against it. Mm. We Nigerians must come together and fight for ourselves. When we wait for these people, mm. it is lie. Because tomorrow, they are going to sit on the same table. Today, APC people are calling Jonathan right, mm. and he's, he's dying and whining with them. And you and I are here. We'll be killing ourselves. It's blessed for us in this country. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, comrade. Thanks for calling. Prince YS is on the line. Hello, Prince YS. Good afternoon, President Sandra. Good afternoon. Thanks for calling. How are you today? I'm very well. You see, the Sarah, for me, the, the, they, are, they, are, they are in order by asking what's the agreement between the Twitter and Nigeria. For the, what they are trying to do, is they want to go to court? You explain about what the agreement look like. So as of today, if uh, what the federal government to fulfill the agreement, but what federal government has done with Twitter, I'm at home with it to save Nigeria reputation. I'm at home with it. And for the Southern Cultural Group, a friendly, friendly, Pande, for our Nisi, the man for South Town uh, candidate for the two political parties. Yes, they are in order because to cement the unity of this country, uh, eight years for the north, eight years for the south, it is cement the unity of this country. Who that's coming out now? Oh, the, we have two dominant parties, which is APC and PDP. If what they can pick that candidate from the south, it will be better for Nigeria. This is what I want them to do, as it is now. It seems to me that APC is starting to the side of the South. But the PDP, when you talk of Article, Article if you the North, if they can shift their own candidate too to the South, it will be better. But right. they say it is going to be, to be North. Can it be, can it be okay for them to use another 12 years or 20 or, or, or 16 years? And we say we are one Nigeria. Every constituency in this country can produce a president for this country if we, if we unite. That's my time this afternoon. Have a blessed day, your studio, Sandra. Uh, have a blessed day as well. Uh, yourself, uh, Prince Y.S. Johnny Inikoro, do you? Hello, how are you? Yeah, uh, good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon. We've got three stories so far. Which one yeah. do you want to talk about? You know, uh, naturally, mm. naturally, mm. Uh, if you look at, at the political terrain uh, uh, here, mm -hmm. you understand that. Uh, we are operating Wazobia. We are for Yoruba, mm -hmm. so for Hausa, and we are for Igbo. Mm -hmm. Under this beer is what all the Igbo, that's that like is not that false. Now, when you look at the terrain of how they've been coming up, we have gotten in Northern for eight years, we have gotten the other side for us. Naturally, this time is meant for an Igbo person okay. or South South. But if they cannot campaign to get themselves very right, they cannot do this wheel because this thing is about figure. Okay. It's about numbers. You need to go out there and do your homework. But I also believe that if the Igbos, since are not federally in control, they are they still believe in their state, they are not sure they might get that position for presidency. I now know that by, rich, by, by, by natural distribution within the parties, I know they will give it to Yoruba man. And the Yoruba man that tends to come in now, who everybody is technically looking forward to, is the vice. Because I know that any other person's mind is going to be vice. But if vice have done, you know, vice president in our country, they, don't, they are not allowed to, to talk. The party does not allow them. Even when Naman Isambo was there, he was not talking, he was not saying anything. So the same thing with this man here, uh, Oshibadi. Oshibadi won't say anything. He's only hiding his, ide his identity. But when he's given a chance, he can perform. But I'm sure that is likely to be a Yoruba. Because even within the ACP or PDP, if the PDP brings a Northerner, it won't go. If they bring Satana, it may go. And if APC brings a Yoruba man, they, within themselves, they know what to do. 
They may not even give in to, to Tunimbu. They know what to do within that time. So that's my take. All right. Thank you, John, for calling. Well, let's round up the big weekend with a look at what presidential aspirants were up to. Oshimbajo himself has not announced. Uh, I mean, we don't even have support groups for Oshimbajo coming forward yet, so we're not talking about Oshimbajo and a potential presidency. We can talk about Ojo uh, Zokalu. Uh, he says that uh, he's in the race for the APC ticket. He's the Senate uh, chief uh, whip. He's a former governor of Abia State. He says that if the APC zones his presidential ticket to the south, he will contest for it against all comers. Now, Kalu has been under a cloud for a couple of years. He was tried and convicted for money laundering at the federal high court. He was sentenced to 12 years. He was in prison serving his sentence when the Supreme Court uh, threw out the conviction and ordered a new trial based on an appeal by one of his co-defendants. So Carlo was released from prison, but right when the EFCC was filing for his retrial, Carlo got an order from the federal high court stopping the EFCC. The High Court agreed with Carlo's argument that the Supreme Court never ordered his retrial since he never took his case there. <laughs> of course, that raises the question that uh, if the Supreme Court order to vacate the conviction applied to him, why wouldn't the, re the order to retry apply to him as well? But anyway, until the EFCC's appeal of the High Court order is heard, Carlo is not only a free man, but he's a man without a criminal record, and therefore he is legally permitted to run for president. Now, like I said, he's a serving senator. He was also a two-term governor of Abia State. So Ndi Abia, that are listening to me, Biko Biano, you know him better than the rest of us. He served you for years. How would you rate Audrey Carlo's performance as your governor, as your senator, and do you think he would make a good president? And please give me your reasons. This is not a bash or Juzo Kahlo event. This is a give me your reasons why you think he would make a good governor, a good president, or he wouldn't make a good president. Give me the reasons why you score him good uh, for uh, you know how he ruled Abia, how he led Abia for eight years, or why you're scoring him bad. Uh, for his time as uh, uh, a governor of Abia State. Now that he's a senator, how is he representing Ndiabia? Carlo wasn't the only one to announce their ambition this weekend or last week. Khadija Okunu Lamidi also joined the fray. She's a 38-year-old advertising executive. She owns her own advertising agency. She worked for the legal signage and advertising agency, LASA. She says that she wants to become president so that she can harness the power of Nigerian youths and make Nigeria work for its diverse population. There's no word yet on what party tickets that she's going for, but she says she's running to be president. Another new asp uh, aspirant who did not specify his party is Chuku Kamonye. Chuku Kamonye uh, declared his intent in Asaba, Delta State. Monye says he's campaigning on three points, security, institutional changes, and job creation. Monye is a, a management consultant, according to his LinkedIn profile. You see a lot of media outlets describe him as a technocrat, but that word has a very precise meaning, which usually doesn't apply to anybody that, Nigeria uses, that Nigerians use it on. So let's just stick to his actual job, huh? <laughs> Lagos, what are your thoughts about Oji Zakalo joining the race? What about these two new politicians, Monye and Okunulamidi? 0700-993-993-993-01465-7190. You can also share your thoughts with me via WhatsApp. And yes, you can talk about all our stories on the show today. So we've talked about uh, law enforcement agents uh, being involved in uh, oil bunkering, bow fire, illegal refining in River State. Then we've talked about um, the Electoral Amendment uh, Bill, the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Uh, INEC says they need to pass it quickly if they want them to use it for the 2023 elections. And then we've talked about zoning and uh, the South and Middle Belt Forum saying that the presidency should be zoned to the South in 2023. We just wrapped up by talking about 
2023 presidential candidates. And not to worry, we're going to have this conversation until 4.30. So if you cannot call in right now, stay here. After the news at 4, we will give you a chance to keep having this conversation with us until 4.30. 99.3, hello. Hello. Thank you for calling. What's your name? Sandra. Mm? Sandra, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, my sister. Mm. The little contribution I have to this is the we have not seen the real candidate. Okay. Out of the three or four or five or six, mm. no, no, the right person have not appeared. Okay. When we see the right person, we will know. And mind you, Nigerians want a young person. We don't need old cargoes. We need vibrant president. The, the, our leaders should know, know that Nigeria is rising up right now. We cannot be full anymore. I need a vibrant president like Mogalo, Kitobi. Um, this is our activist, the FFN. What's his name? We need a young people. Even women. Women should come out. As the question She's good. So we have not seen the right person. Yeah, okay. that's the point there. Thank you very much for calling. Adeshino on, on Twitter says, Serap is very right. This is what many institutions should be doing in order to set the government on its toes. We really need to know what, it's in the, what is in the agreement letter. On zoning, I totally and heartily support it. Adeshino, thanks for your message. Person Peking on Twitter says, Presidency zoning is a spare in the hands of the North and a beggar's pan in the hands of the South. Electoral amendment bill will improve the next election. It will not make it, uh, it will not make 2023 election perfect, but it will make it better. All right. Thank you very much, Person Peking, for your message. 99.3, hello. 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 Good afternoon. Thanks for calling. President Sandra. Good to have Good you on the show. You are highly welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. My name is Alex. Hi, Alex. Anyway, um, I'm calling from Leggy. Good to have you on the show. Go ahead. Let's talk about zoning. Okay. If we want to be sincere and be fair to each other, I think we should give the South East uh, opportunity. But one thing about politics, they will not sit back to give you those opportunities. You, you have to go. Oh, no. Call me back, Alex, if you can. 99.3. Hello. Hello, good afternoon, good, Sandra. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm good. This is Mr. Darlington. Yeah. Coming from Welcome, Mr. Darlington. And hello to your baby. <laughs> hey, that's good afternoon, though. I'm talking anyway. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, I want to get my voice on the uh, issue of uh, Oji Kalu becoming the president. Okay. I don't, I don't really think uh, he would make a good candidate because when he was the governor of Ajax State, he didn't do well. Okay. In fact, if we must have a president from the East, it has to be P2B, though okay. my personal opinion anyway. Okay. So, Oji uh, Aba Ariaria was very dirty under the leadership of Oji Carlo. Okay. In fact, if I'm to vote, I can't vote for him. That's my contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling. We appreciate it. 99.3, hello. <laughs> brother you have called before we've got ib amber on facebook who says sandra the entire country agreed to cede power to the southwest in 1999 the same thing played out in the election that brought leto mariara um, a candidate a candidate from the northwest to power in 2007 why should it be different when it is the turn of Igbo southeast to be treated likewise yoruba are not sincere if they're not careful the north will retain power because of their refusal to let power go around ib amber with that message on Facebook. Uh, Omar Vincent says, the issue of bunkering is not today. It has always had the backing from uh, the big politicians, security personnel, community leaders. There was a time in this country that a VP goes to River State for his cut monthly, but we're not supposed to know this. This thing stinks to high heavens. If people start to talk, the country will boil. Omar Vincent with that message there on Facebook. Abba David says, the young adults are not ready. Between Tinubu and Atiku, I think Tinubu is better. But if PDP wants to really win the election, they should use Jonathan and one strong guy from the north, someone like Malam Nasser El Rufai. David Joyous with that message there. 99.3, hello. Hello, President Sandra. Good to have you on the show. Good afternoon, sir. Benjamin Chidevere is my name. Welcome, Benjamin Chidevere. Let me just start from uh, the... Our brother just wants to contest for President Suzo Kalu and from Adia State. Okay. I don't think that that one is just a joke. 
Okay. Let him go and rest and make use of the one money I've gotten from my Abia treasure, the one he looted. And again, I don't know why, why we are allowing people that is ex convict to contest in our any of our uh, political uh, office. Well, he's not an ex convict because they overturned but, his but, conviction. Uh, but his name is already there. It's already, it's already, already, it have already, they have already named him that he went to jail. He's not in jail when they call uh, court. Uh, 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 but they've overturned it. They've ov if they overturn your conviction, it means that you're not an ex-con. Uh, uh, President Sandra, mm -hmm. uh, you have already entered study. have already entered study. So <laughs> we don't need such a person. So, so uh, for the APC, I mm. think when they are campaigning from 2015, they are talking about the youth. But they will hand over the uh, presidency to the youth come uh, the let's say, uh, 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 election. Mm -hmm. And this one again, that's what they contest. They, they campaign for. Why are they now bringing all these old cargoes, all with our forefathers, to come and do Nigeria again? So uh, it's better for the youth to, to shine their eye very well. All these people that come coming out. We need youth to take over this country. And well, we have we have one youth that has. Well, she's not like she's not technically she's not a youth. She's 38 years old. I'm talking. I'm talking of the APC okay. now. That that was what they used for their campaign. Mm. That was what they used for their campaign. Mm -hmm. Also, Mole is there. This like Mohammed, all of them, they are standing on that stand that they were promising Nigeria heaven and the earth. Even the security and how the dollar will come to one naira. Mm -hmm. How Petro will come to this. How everything. Will come. Now they are denying for whatever and they are trying to bring all these old cargoes again. Let the youth shine their eyes and get ready with their PVC by 2023. We need the youth. All right. By that time, all these old people will run out of the country. Thank you and have a nice day. Have a nice day as well. David Cappuccino on uh, Twitter says, Sandra, there's nothing wrong with rotational presidency because it will help all the zones present candidates. To be specific, it is the turn of the Southeast. But we should prevent competent um, candidates that can perform so that, so let us be specific, uh, not just say Southeast. Uh, I think you meant to write present all right, thank you very much for your message. Lightman says, Thank you, o Sandra. Nigerian media and government should be banned from using the word technocrat after years of abuse. <laughs> and Dossier Henry says, Sandra, we deserve to know the agreement between federal government and Twitter. It must not be a secret agreement. Well, the federal government has said what the agreement is. They've used their mouths to talk it. You and I talked about it on the show last week. 99.3, hello. Hello. Thanks for calling. What's your name? Hello, Sandra. This is Alex. Alex, long time no here. Happy New Year. Happy I'm sorry year. I couldn't oblige to your request uh, oh. during the festivities. It's okay. Everybody was yes. asking for you. They're like, we yes, thought you yes. were bringing Alex. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> sorry. So congratulations on your elevation. Thank you. Yes. So let me just quickly say a few things here. Mm -hmm. um, Nigerians need to be aware of those who are simply running um, to be president just mm. to get a trophy on their shelf. Mm. Well, we need to be looking for somebody who is capable of being the head of government. Okay. Now, if you see it from that perspective, mm. I am afraid. I cannot, I, I, even if I tried, mm. I cannot see Uzokalu as the head of government. Let's, let me leave it at that. The same for Ashiwaju, by the way. Okay. I wouldn't want to take that risk on myself okay. and on generations of my family okay. coming. Okay. That's that. Okay. Now, the second one is um, anybody who has benefited from the kind of corruption that exists in our democracy mm. cannot have the, the, the political will to fix our democracy. The kind of, you know, I've, I've said it on this station before, Sandra, mm. that we have a, we practice a fake democracy. Right. Anybody who has benefited benefited from it up till this moment right. cannot have the, the, the moral standing to challenge it. And we need it is it, this this fake democracy is part of our problems. It's part of why there's Boko Haram. It's part of why there's oil bunkering. It's part of why there's all kinds of even in the judiciary. It's part of it. Right. Now on bunkering, let me just point out, Sandra. You see. It's one word, restructuring. If we fit, for as long as we refuse to restructure this country, mm -hmm. there are things that we. What is the difference between what is happening in the oil bunker in, in the in the in, the, in, the, in that place mm -hmm. and what is happening with gold in Zamfara? There's no difference. It's right. just that the, the substance is different. Right. It's the same thing. Right. The last thing I want to say, Sandra, is this. I hear people, I hear things like Afeni Fede said, uh, Haneze said, uh, Nathan, I would like to be hearing in the news too that the youth have met, and this is what they are saying. The youth must find a way to bring, we, let me say we must find a way to bring ourselves into the mainstream news 
so that when we are meeting and we are talking, we, the, audio, the, the newspaper is also reporting it. Mm. If not, these are very fair and uh, there might not be more than three or four Igbo people who sit down, uh, chief with red cap, sit down, they bring newspaper men, pay them 2000 I'm sorry, I'm sorry to respect to my newspaper people, you know, and then they go to the news. We should also start thinking of meeting. Where, where, where are we meeting? Where are we talking? We're not talking. And so, so we, somehow we expect things to happen. Thanks, Sandra. I wish you the best in the new year. Thank you very much, Alex. I wish you the best in the new year as well. Uh, let's go to WhatsApp. We've got a message here. Um, it says that a DPO owns an illegal refinery in River State is no news to me. That is just one of the known crimes uh, being perpetrated by those in authority. They will usually hide under the cloak of uniform to milk the nation dry. This is a common occurrence. Uh, you will only know uh, when somebody's cup is full. Tony Anneli in Ijegamo with that message. He also says, let NAS amend for the president to sign other vital parts of the electoral bill. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. Let's take a break. When we come back, I'll take more of your calls and we'll keep talking all the way until 4.30. Love when they talk, say 2K not be money. So you never your fidelity get a lot of millions promos in five when it is say, we just chicken 2K. You fit to win plenty millions. All you need now to open any type of savings account with Fidelity Bank. Collect your ATM, join, or use account where you don't get before they save at least 2K inside. And the more you save, the higher your chance to win. Then lucky customers go fit to win 1 million naira each every month. They still get 5 million naira for one lucky customer and 2 million naira for another lucky customer. Plus 50 lucky customers go they chop 10, 10,000 naira one by each every week. Make a compost your head finally. If you fit the safe 2K constantly make it plenty, you fit to carry 10 million naira go house. If you like no rush, go open your fidelity account and activate your debit card. We are fidelity. We keep our word. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Your number one station for talk. Let's talk. Five minutes to four o'clock. We've got four stories uh, that we shared with you. Actually, we have a lot of other stories we shared because there was so much that happened over the weekend, right? But uh, we have a big four that we shared with you. And um, you, you, you got very involved in, in these stories and would love to give you time to, like, you know, tell us what you think about all of them. So one of them is uh, the showdown in River State this weekend between Governor uh, Nyesomwike and... Uh, law enforcement over oil bunkering or oil fire if you missed it when we talked about it let me play you the video and the audio again our website our facebook is nigeria info 99.3 youtube is nigeria info fm <laughs> Are you seeing what police are doing? Police are fighting themselves. Police are fighting themselves. Are you seeing the cons conspiracy? What? Why? Why? See the conspiracy. See the conspiracy. See the conspiracy. Can you just Are you seeing the conspiracy? Are you seeing the conspiracy? Share this video. Share this video. Can you see the conspiracy? No. Are you seeing the conspiracy? We need to arrest all of them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. That's what it is. Go ahead, sir. Come. All the people. Where's the commander? You are the you are the commander. I will be also to the governor of River State. So what are you people doing here with this one? Uh, yesterday, your guy was denying that you are not doing bunkering, you are not guarding any bunkering. What is happening here now? What is happening here now? It's not about God. My God. Are, this is my the, God. This is the headquarters. This is the headquarters. This is what you are be doing. Yes. And your guy said yesterday when they meet, he said that you are not doing bunkering, you are not guarding anywhere. It's terrible. No, if you tell him, oh, let him, let, let yes. him, because he's the one. Yes. He's the one. He was the one who met here now. Later, they started carrying guns. What? That is, ah! I'm telling you. They started carrying guns. He was on, he was on when we got here. 
was a mock. Yes, yeah. boss. The man that came was wearing a. Come, ASP. Yes, what is your rank? That's a, 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 a ASP. I'm a minister. Disarm him. Now, collect his rifle for me. <laughs> so this is what we have been doing. And the government is every... Yeah. No, 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 no. Every day. I will not take it. I will not take it. I will not take it. As the colonel, your people, trucks line up here. Where are they? They should call all of them. Proof, proof, proof. All of them. All this is what the French should call. I see all of them. There you have it, uh, the drama uh, in River State uh, when uh, the Obia local government chairman, accompanied by police, tried to shut down an alleged refining site, but another set of police and civil defense personnel allegedly tried to stop him. Then the governor sent his chief security officer to the scene and he confronted civil defense personnel there. And now the civil defense corps has responded and uh, disbanded the anti-vandal unit that is supposed to be protecting uh, the bunkering sites, but has uh, somehow managed to uh, be um, providing security for those who want to bunker the sites. Uh, Wike has also confirmed that a DPO of a police station in Emoha local government was accused of owning an illegal refinery. He says the commissioner of police in the state has transferred the DPO, but Wike wants him back in the state. Now, we'll talk about that story and all the other stories we covered on the Big Three today for 30 minutes before I hand you over to the sports gang on the other side of 4 o'clock. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. Don't go away. It's 4 o'clock. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info.